Well, good morning. It's high time for another walk. And it seems like ages since I've been out with the camera uh, to film a walk. Um, but I'll tell you more about that later. Today, uh, we have come out to Witchampton. That's where I'm starting the walk from. And today's walk is going to be a walk um, with a specific purpose. It's uh, coming up towards mid-November. The autumn colours are still around because we haven't had huge amounts of wind uh, recently. So I'm hoping that uh, we're going to find some lovely autumn colours and some autumn woodlands to walk through. That is specifically the plan of the day. So I hope you're going to join with me. I will tell you more about it as we go. But uh, yeah, I promises to be a good day and there's even a bit of brightness in the sky and there's been precious little of that recently anyway join with me it's going to be a good day so yes we started from this beautiful village of Witchampton which uh, is one of the places I really love and it's one of my regular haunts East Dorset we're in uh, and it's a place where there's where there's lots of nice countryside good walks woodlands and so on around here so it's quite a regular one and I have filmed here before you might recognize it and we're starting at the church the church of St Mary St Cuthberger and All Saints and uh, not an old church or the oldest part is actually the tower that we're looking at and that's 15th century the rest of it was rebuilt in the 19th century but um, we have filmed in there before in a previous video so i won't actually go in the church today i'm anxious to get cracking and get out into the woodlands but there's one or two things i want to pick up at uh, witchampton as we walk and the first of them is down here and it's confusion for me i think um, and it is a lovely big house opposite the church which is actually known as abbey house and the uh, very name Abbey House would suggest there might have been an abbey. And that's one of the confusions I have. Hmm, somebody's alarm's going off. Um, so this is Abbey House. It is apparently one of the earliest brick buildings in Dorset. Uh, it's not necessarily ever part of an abbey. It's a manor house, 16th century, and it's probably actually a priest's house. But there's always a little bit of doubt with that name, Abbey House. Anyway, there's more to come. And in fact, not only is the house 16th century, but I think the perimeter wall is 16th century as well far as I understand it. Maybe slightly unusual for red brick to be that old, but um, apparently there was clay in the area. So it's one of the earlier brick buildings in Dorset. So I'm just taking a little detour down here to have a look at some even older buildings. So the buildings we've come to look at is the other side of this field. Can't get to it because it's on private ground. But this is known as the Abbey Buildings, which again suggests there might have been an abbey at some stage at Witchampton. But in fact, that is not thought to be the case. So these buildings are 13th century origin. 
but Hutchins says there's no evidence of any religious connection, that more likely it's a manor house, and at one time it was lived in or owned by the Maltravers family, uh, who literate Maltravers and uh, various other villages have been named after. Langton Matravers is another one. They were named after the Maltravers family who owned this at one time. So you can understand my confusion. We have Abbey House and we have Abbey Buildings, but no evidence of there ever being an Abbey at Witchampton. Strange. But final thing I just wanted to look at down here is the fountain. Still flowing. So this dates from the 18th century and it is uh, one of the original water sources of the village and it's uh, fed by a spring. Anyway, detour over. We'll retrace our steps and move on. So I said at the start, it was high time for a walk. And it certainly is. Um, it's been some weeks since I've been able to get out on what I call a proper walk. In fact, the last time I filmed was in the Lake District, which was, what was that? Probably third week of September. And we're now coming up to mid-November. And it's, um, well, a couple of reasons really. Uh, health. I've had quite a few, quite a few things gone wrong in those weeks. Seem to have had one health issue after another. Um, I've done COVID tests so many times, <laughs> and they all proved negative. So I can only think it was a kind of one virus after another or something. I don't know. Anyway, just meant I wasn't able to get out doing the walking that I normally do and the filming. Um, not helped by the fact that there's been this anti-cyclonic gloom, which just simply means cloudy. And we've still got an element of it today. But it's been heavy cloud for weeks now, the whole of this month at least. So not ideal conditions for getting out filming. Um, and because of that, of course, means my ankle has gone, gone stiff on me because if you don't use it, if you get out and keep it mobile and flexible, it stiffens up. So... <laughs> Yeah, it's not it's been a funny, funny uh, six, seven weeks, is it? Uh, anyway, <laughs> so it's really great to be out today. And I think I've caught some of the autumn colours still. Fortunately, along with this anti-cyclonic gloom there's been not much wind so I'm hoping that there's a lot of foliage still on the trees and it's good to be out oh and here's the second church which is actually not a church it is now a private house. So you buy that place, you get your own graveyard. 
So we're about to leave Witchampton now. A little bit of road walking, but it's a nice road. Yeah, I was thinking just now, um, thinking about the abbey buildings, which were not, not an abbey, or it seems like. All the sources around seem to suggest they was no connection with any religious order or anything like that and it was actually a manor house um kind of just led me to think about how these places came into being i mean this was there were people living here which hampton has been uh around since was well, certainly mentioned in the doomsday book can't remember where the name comes from three words wick Haim and Tun. Uh, what do they mean? Uh, right, so I've got it now. I looked it up to remind myself. Um, it says that it translates roughly to a farm of the dwellers on the site of a Romano-British settlement. So that's what Witchampton apparently means. <laughs> but yes, it, I was kind of thinking about how it came into being, because the land originally would have been common land. It was basically stolen this under the kind of feudal system you could kind of say it was stolen by the king so uh wars happen things like the norman conquests and so on people fight uh the king wants to reward those who fought in the battles and i don't imagine for a minute it involves the um ground troops uh, I imagine it relates to the uh, land to the gentry should we say the captains and leaders of the war who curry favor with the king he wants to reward them so he gives them land and of course where does he get that land from effectively you could argue he steals it from the local people and suddenly it's given to someone who becomes lord something or other i don't know and he has a manor built there and suddenly the people of the village become servants effectively to the lord of the manor and i don't know it kind of makes me angry in some ways that this country that belongs to us is actually owned privately by people because it was basically given to their ancestors many many years ago under probably the feudal system um, and now we can't access most of it so that's one of my one of my pet gripes i don't pretend to remember history of the feudal system and either we did it at school serfs and fief and all that kind of thing um it'd be interesting to read more up on it i think anyway let's put a positive spin on it let's be grateful for what we can access and today's part of that <laughs> Oh no, let's have one more gripe <laughs> before we leave it. <laughs> um, these people who own this land, Lord whoever, own all this land all over the country. There are um, estates, privately owned estates. 
We are short of accommodation, so they say, in this country. So we're losing a lot of our open, certainly locally, we're losing a lot of our open countryside because planning permission is being given to build new housing estates and so on. And so we're losing that effectively. But I bet Lord whoever doesn't lose any of his land to produce housing for those people who need housing. Uh, is that contentious? <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? And that's a lovely house here that I always admire when I come past it. I know I've shown this in a previous video. It's this place here, Sheep House Farm. I love that place. It's a kind of quadrangle of buildings including obviously the the house and what were I think outbuildings I guess to make like a quadrangle with one corner open so that you can drive into the quadrangle I think it's lovely it's got a patch of ground around it nice big garden so it's called sheep house I think it was probably something to do with uh, well, it's obviously to do with farming originally uh, and presumably sheep. <laughs> so I think the last time I filmed in this area was back in the spring because uh, along the way up here there are some wonderful bluebell woods that I've been coming to for years every spring and uh, when I came here then which was last yeah well, no this year wouldn't it be spring this year I've only been filming this year so spring this year I uh, came here expecting to be able to walk through the woods it wasn't an official footpath it was a kind of a permissive path um, and when I got there it's all fenced off, closed off, gates put across all the entrances with uh, private woodlands, keep out signs everywhere and I don't know, it's, uh, I was absolutely gutted, I was really disappointed it's kind of been, even though there was no official footpath there was a kind of implied, certainly an implied ability, and at locals, everybody was using it. I often saw people walking through there. So, really disappointing, I thought. And uh, yeah, I'm interested to know today whether that fence is still there. Um, I think sometimes when people put these fences up they'll get broken down by somebody eventually so I'm interested to see because uh, it's not only a lovely bluebell woods in the spring it's a lovely autumn woods as well anyway we'll see when we get there Ooh, that's a nice bit of I bet this smells <laughs> Sometimes it's really beneficial not to have a sense of smell. <laughs> Just a bit of juicy, bit of manure.
Right, so the gate is still in place. I'm guessing that that indicates what someone thought about it. Probably somebody who's walked through these lovely woods for years and suddenly not able to. Oh well. Onwards we go. You have to pick your battles, don't you? Is it circles of influence and circles of concern? So anywhere they overlap, you take action. <laughs> There's not much you can do if somebody who owns land wants to fence it off and stop people using it. Not unless you get together a whole group of people and try and have it created through habitual use over 20 years or something have it created a public footpath and there's an awful lot of hoops to jump through to achieve that but it's still not as sunny as they forecasted for today but it's a lot brighter and um, it's also quite still there's not a lot of wind around. We don't seem to have much wind for some time. Otherwise, I think the trees would probably be more bare. The strange thing to me is that the ground seems quite waterlogged still. And I know I walked near the river the other day, the River Stour, and it was high. Which is kind of odd because we haven't actually had much rain to speak of for some weeks although we've had this anti-cyclonic gloom heavy cloud overhead it's not actually been much rain so I don't know why it seems so wet everywhere I mean obviously it's wet and wet at night I suppose but uh, anyway yeah, apparently the anti-cyclonic gloom is a thing. <laughs> it basically means there's high pressure above us. And that high pressure is trapping in moisture underneath it. And that moisture obviously turns to cloud. And it's an anti-cyclonic gloom that we've had for weeks and weeks. And it creates something known as anti-cyclonic blues I think <laughs> what it does with me anyway because uh, I don't like the I like some sunshine and brightness and be able to get out and enjoy the light anyway <laughs> so there you go anti-cyclonic gloom it's a thing <laughs> oh the other thing incidentally so I actually don't see very many slows this year. I wonder if it's a bad year for slows. Or whether it's just I've not been anywhere to spot any. I don't know. I quite like to pick slows in the winter. Or the autumn winter. But I'm not actually seeing many to pick. Interesting. I wonder if anybody else has noticed that or seen anything to say that it's a bad year for just fruits, autumn fruits generally, I think. Not a lot of autumn fruits anywhere along here. And it's a lovely hedgerow. Apart from the tracts of woodlands around here, it's a very open landscape. Which is actually sad, of course, because there would have been lots of hedgerows around here at one time. And uh, they've obviously been removed to create these massive fields for arable crops. But it does make it a very open landscape. Probably a bit bereft 
of nature probably. Uh, I did see some deer earlier on and there's been a couple of buzzards around. Ooh. And there's a few flying things around as well at the moment. Even uh, the odd butterfly. I suppose it's because it's been so mild. Well, you can see how they obviously do get quite a lot of deer here, I assume. Because that platform looks straight out across the open fields. So here we are at our first area of woodlands and this is Cheddar Wood. Again it's one of those places that I quite often walk I might have come here in the autumn. There are some nice colours. And a lovely leaf strewn pathway. And it's a good spot to stop for lunch, I think, because it's, uh, it's uh, must be getting on towards that time now. And it's just occurred to me that I've forgotten something. Uh, it's quite funny because I haven't done a proper walking for six, seven weeks. I've just done the odd. I've tried to keep my ankle a little bit mobile by going out for local, just local walks, just a mile or two try and keep the ankle a little bit mobile um, but it's quite funny how you have to think about what I normally bring and two things come to mind I forgot to put my glasses in the rucksack and the other thing is I haven't brought a flask that's tragedy I've got water but I've got no hot drink gutted about that Never mind. The Chatterwood, as you can see, is partly forestry, coniferous forestry, and also partly mixed woodland. So it's a mix of trees. And there are some nice leaves. I love it when the I love it when the leaves crunch. I suppose leaves in some ways autumn's a bit like having snow, isn't it? You get this lovely carpet of leaves, nice and crisp and newly fallen. And gradually over a period of time the rain comes and they get trampled into mud and that sort of thing and they turn all mushy and mucky. And it kind of makes me think of snow. When you get that lovely layer of pristine virgin snow that's so pure and white and give it a couple of days and it starts to thaw and turn slushy and mucky it's kind of it's a little bit the same i think well in my mind anyway <laughs> Wow, look at the colour of that tree. That is 
phenomenal. Amazing. Absolutely wonderful that is. And it just so happens that it's my lunchtime stop. Look at that. I hope that comes out on the film. But it's my lunchtime stop because there's a little seat. I might have filmed here before, I can't remember. But this is something that intrigues me because this says 1918 to 1997. So it's obviously some kind of memorial seat and CGM initials. And I've never actually been able to find out who CGM is. But it's a good stop, stopping point. For some lunch but if anybody knows who cgm is who knows this area then put a note up in the comments because i'd be interested to know but there you go that's my seat for the next half hour <laughs> seat is a very pleasant spot for lunch look at these colors absolutely brilliant but we need to walk on so we're actually at a crossroads here and we're not going down any of the four There's one there one there under our tree one there and one there but we're actually going down this one which is the fifth one so it's a meeting of five paths uh, obviously the main ones are forestry paths well in fact they're all forestry paths I guess Yeah, we've got another nice crunchy bed of leaves to walk on.
another awesome tree. Such lovely colours. This always intrigues me as well. <coughs> There's a great big hole, which is quite a circular hole and quite deep, and there's a tree growing out the middle of it. So the question is, why was the hole there in the first place? So it looks like it's man-made. Don't know. Oh, it's a nice bit of sunlight look coming through the woodlands now. That's a real blessing that is after so much cloud just to see that bit of brightness. Uh, does your heart good and your head as well. There's obviously a lot of logging operations been going on in these woods. There's a lot of them. Ah. That's fungi. Known as King Alfred's Cakes, I seem to remember. For obvious reasons. It's all along here as well, look. All right, we'll continue down this way. There's so many different colours and textures in amongst leaves when you look at them. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's the yellowy colour that sycamore tends to turn. You've got the bright orange of the beech trees that we saw earlier. The darker orange, which I think is either is that beech that's fallen earlier, or is that a copper beech? And a whole raft of different ages as well, because these are obviously older leaves that have rotted down. Again, that's um, sycamore, isn't it? And I'm not I'm not the best at identifying trees I have to say. I never remember. <laughs> I have trouble remembering things like that. But it um, just amazes me the variety and the textures and tones at this time of the year and how they change colours at different times. So you've got the early, the early trees or the, the trees that change early who are probably the trees are probably bare now and you've got trees that are still hanging on to green leaves pretty much just I, it just amazes me really does I'm hoping I can get through this path all right, because this can get quite muddy down here, churned up by horses. See these wonderful colours. Look at this. Fantastic. 
It reminds me of a carpet that we used to have in our house back in the 70s it would be, 1970s, <laughs> when it was the in thing then to have a autumn coloured carpet. Yeah, see this is difficult here. Oops, good job I got my walking pole. Right, made that one. <laughs> Tell you what, this time of the year, walking like this reminds me of my youth. And when I was teenage, uh, I had a dog called Rex. And it just kind of walking takes me right back to those days when I used to walk Rex and I mean I walked him more times of the year obviously but the ones that stick in my mind are the autumn and winter walks when it was cold really cold out and you take him out through woodlands just like this and we do a long walk and then you'd be frazzled by the time you finished and we'd head home and uh, we had a log fire at home, didn't have central heating, lived in a council house, no central heating or anything like that, so um, it was a log fire. And after being out in the cold all day, walking Rex, we would get home and sit with a hot cup of tea or cocoa or something by the uh, blazing log fire. And it was wonderful. It's got, got such clear and lovely memories from those days. I really have a uh, shame we didn't film them. I just, well, I couldn't film them. I suppose I could have done, I guess, 1970s. No, 1970s, it'd be 1960s, wouldn't it? I was born in 48, 1960s. Um, I guess cine cameras were around, but we certainly couldn't afford anything like that. So I've got a few photos, that's all. Happy memories they were. So we're out of Cheddar Wood now, out into the open again for a short time before we head up into these woods ahead of us and hopefully more autumn colours. something running in the distance I'm sure it won't come out on the video deer I would say actually there's pheasants there as well lots of them right into our next area of woodlands I'm thinking this is a one-time coppice wood. It's got a look about it. Interesting over here, I've just spotted. fleecy bottoms to them. 
on the bottom of every stem, every bit of tree. I've grown a um, fur coat. How amazing is that? A sign it's a damp area I guess and just moss and lichen taking over it's the same yeah, amazing incredible what you see if you look around you isn't it? it's amazing isn't it how children have that natural sense of wonder they get excited over the smallest of things like ants and things like that when when they're young and the older you get the more you lose that sense of wonder and it really is something that I try to deliberately foster and keep because um, there is so much to see and take in nature is just amazing and if you can maintain that sense of wonder and just keep looking about you as you walk it's incredible what you see it's just beautiful that's a nice carpet of leaves there and look at that for a tree Magnificent. quite a muddy track this one it's not easy to negotiate with brambles down the sides Horsey area, obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. hmm. Better for a minute. Look at this for a tree. That is huge.
sun is getting very low in the sky now. It's one of the issues with autumn and winter walks. You get short daylight hours. Never mind. It's nice to see the sun. I think that's a lovely view. Cottages down there are the hamlet of Manswood. We're not actually going that way today, but it's a path I walk pretty often. I think it's just beautiful. We're actually going the other way. It's another seat that I call my seat. We're at lunchtime. I'd sit there and have lunch. It's a lovely little spot. And of course I have filmed here before. This is the longest row of thatch cottages in Dorset. Is it Dorset or England? There's uh, 12 of them, I think, originally. Well, a couple have been amalgamated. So I think there's 10 now. Lovely. Oh, there's some horses coming. Hi. Hi. Well, the sun is well with me now. That's a sight we've not had for a long time. Clear blue sky, but the shadows are very long. Just above the horizon still. What a beautiful evening. I even got the moon up there. Absolutely lovely evening it is. Or well, actually it's afternoon still, isn't it? Sunset's early now. Looks like a pair of Chinooks coming across. Well, that was a funny end to the day. I've just had an owl hooting in the trees up here. Okay, that figures. It's late afternoon, sun's almost setting, but Oh, there it was again. At the same time over here, I can hear a cock crowing. Did that not suggest it's morning? I'm confused. <laughs> definitely not morning, because that's definitely sunset, not sunrise. Hey, the Maybe the uh, cock has realised his mistake. He's got his clock wrong. And the owl seems to have gone back to sleep again. <laughs> Not so the moon though. He's still up. He's coming up higher.
We've reached another one of my seats. <laughs> They're all my seats, not anybody else. There's another one I sit on regularly. We've still got the artificial conkers on the tree. <laughs> so this is a nice place to finish the walk I think and sign the video off as I have a little take the weight off my feet for a minute so yes it's, uh, it's a good place to sign the video off I think uh, what an awesome day it's been it's been absolutely fantastic I love being out again after being kind of sidelined for a while uh, and so good to have a bit of sunshine as well. It was a bit cloudier than was forecasted, but never mind. We got some sunshine and this week generally I think is brighter. So that's really good news, I think. So it's been a fantastic day. Got some autumn woodlands, which is what I was after really before all the leaves disappear for another year. So I haven't quite um, finished walking actually at the moment. I've just got a bit more walking to do down the road behind me uh, to get back to Witchhampton but uh, that's not going to take too long so thanks so much for coming with me I uh, hope you've enjoyed it I've loved it but for now this is me the Dorset Rambler saying until next time and hopefully it'll be a lot quicker than it was last time until next time. <laughs>